Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity podcast, episode 98. Now, we are joined by a returning guest today, who I will introduce in a second. Um, but first of all, I will introduce, we've got one of the hosts with us at the moment, and we're hoping the second one will join us in a minute. But uh, the first host I'll introduce you to is Mr. Peter Lance. How are you, Pete? I'm very well. I'm very well. It's my day. It's not my day off, but my day of no, no sessions today. So I've already been out for a walk with a boy. Done my training this morning and everything. So, yeah, yeah, had my breakfast late. And then now we're on this. And then I'll take him out for a walk again. It's, good. it's you know, it's nice outside. So it's all good. It's a good it's day. Good. It's a good day. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, yeah, if Paul does join us, uh, we will introduce him as he, as he joins us. But our guest today uh, is returning all the way. He's, he's at a temporary stopover at his home in, um, in Italy. <laughs> He's been telling us about all the travel he's doing and he has done and is coming up all over the place uh, doing certifications and courses and things. Uh, Mr. Fabio Zonin, how are you doing, Fabio? Hi, everyone. I'm doing great. Melting in the heat currently. So I'm jealous about what Peter just said because over here it's incredibly hot and humid. And I, I tried. I took a shower just before the podcast. It looked nice. I'm already sweating through. So uh, <laughs> looks like I've been just raining. I... Haven't I trained this morning? But I feel like I just finished my training session. Okay. So how hot is it out there where you are, Fabio? Uh we're around forty degrees centigrade, but the humidity is really high. And uh, yeah, right. Put it this way: we're, we're, my weather app says we're at, we're twenty-one degrees today, right? I'm jealous. I'm 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 from the north of England. As soon as it gets above fourteen degrees, I start. That's when I start moaning. <laughs> I start really. <laughs> Right, you're going to Iceland. Yeah, so 40s just, I, I couldn't exist in that. Yeah, and over here, I'm one of the few who is totally against air conditioning. It doesn't make me feel good, so I never, uh, I never, you know, put air conditioning in my studio. And I prefer to sweat and take more showers. So, still, I'm melting. Okay. <laughs> before, before we get started uh, with today's uh, podcast, I will say that Fabio has been on with us before. Um, if you haven't listened to the first episode, I would highly recommend that you do. It was episode number 58, so 40 episodes ago, and it was called The Universal Principles of Strength. And in that episode, uh, Fabio, uh, first of all, we kind of got introduced to Fabio, his backstory, you know, where he came from. And we also discussed the differences between um, like barbell training, kettlebell training, body weight training, the kind of pros and cons of each, the programming dis uh, differences between both, uh, between all three of them, sorry. Um, so if you haven't listened to episode 58 yet, the first one, I would go back and listen to that before you listen to this. We may touch on some of the things we talked about last time, uh, but we obviously won't go back into, into full detail. So I'd listen to that one uh, first. So uh, Fabio, um, what I thought we would talk about today, and we, we kind of mentioned it just before we started recording, was something that's, that I get a lot of questions about now. And um, Pete and I are both in our uh, mid-40s, and you've just said to us that you're kind of um, 53 or 53 this year. Yeah. Yes. And um, it, it's kind of strength as we get older and strength as we age. And... Um, I train lots of people in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, even their 70s. And I know that it, you're 53 and you're incredibly uh, strong and train very hard still. And there's lots of questions that we can come that, that, will get, that are going to springboard off the back of this. But initially, from your current from your current perspective was kind of what do you what do you envisage your training looking like? Uh, well, first of all, maybe just a quick recap on what your training looks like now and then how you see that changing potentially um, in a decade's time when you would be 63. Can we kind of st start from there, if that's OK? Yes, of yeah. course, with pleasure. So right now, well, as you know, I'm uh, the guinea pig of myself. 
So I'm running an experimental protocol that I designed for other athletes. Uh, most of them, not all of them way younger, but I am also one of the guinea pigs of the plan. So it, it's a barbell plan, it's a weight cycle, it's about strength and also hypertrophy. And so it involves basically uh, the main movement patterns. So there is, uh, there's a squat, there's a hinge, there's a press, there's a pull, and um, there are some particular techniques, techniques there. But the idea is seeing if I can still gain some strength. It's a 15 week plan uh, with the final peaking uh, phase and taper and so on. And the idea is, by the way, see if I can break any PR at my age, any of my previous PR. So this kind of partially answers to your, to your previous question. Um, uh, between, in, so I trained this, this, is, this plan is, uh, is designed for four training sessions a week, which does not mean that I do nothing the other days. The other days I do my uh, kettlebell work with, uh, this plan is mostly with barbells. Some, there's some kettlebells and some body weight with mainly barbells, but in my other days, I basically train my kettlebell ballistics and my get-ups. So I do some contralateral movements. I do some throwing stuff. I do my swings. I do my get-ups and so on and so forth. So I basically train six days out of seven. This is what I usually do on a regular basis. Sometimes there's three sessions of strength and three and conditioning. Sometimes two of strength, two of conditioning. Sometimes, right, like now, or about strength and so one is that usually one quality is the main is, is the main course and the others are the side dishes. Now question what I what am I gonna do in 10 years from now? I guess pretty much the same, just adapted to uh, my strength, health levels, my you know mobility, several other things, whatever I can do. But the idea is keep going forever. Um, of course, there is difference between what I do and what I've been doing, what I'm doing currently and what I will do because I was a competitive athlete. And uh, someone else who uh, just does it you know, to maintain good health and good performance and uh, the ability of doing you know, uh, daily basis activity, activities on a daily basis. This is also my job. All I do is train people and train myself basically. So it's kind of different. And also the changes uh, through the years and decades, I think this is something we may explore, we probably want to explore. Uh, they depend a lot on when you started. I'll give you one example, because we were kind of mentioned, kind of mentioning this and be before we started this live, right? Which is, I started lifting bars at 13 years old. So this was 40 years ago. And so I, I got everything I could out of the barbell. So of course, my goal and main goal now is maintaining as long as I can while staying healthy, my maintaining my strength levels, my uh, muscle mass levels, my uh, keep a good body composition, you know, and so on and so forth. I, it's very hard for me to think about improving at this age, even though, you know, I broke, I broke one PR a uh, year and a half ago. So over 50, I broke a spot, my spot PR, my over all time spot PR, which is, so it's doable, but it's not something that happens easily. What about if someone starts at my age? The uh, room of improvement is, is incredible. Uh, I can't really quote the study because I read it many years ago, but I recall that there was one study that was brought to my attention by a good friend of mine, Professor uh, Antonio Pauli from the University of Padua. He's a researcher with in physiology. And he, he was showing me that in person page, the results in terms of strength and, and muscle mass gains of someone starts training at seven years old, 70 years old versus someone starts in his 20s, in person age is the same result. What does that mean? Of course, a 70 years old person will never become as strong, as performant as a young person. But if you look at the percentage of, the, of, of uh, improvement from the starting point, it's pretty much the same. Now, of course, because this person has never trained it before. I mean, one joke I used to make at the time in which Zumba became so popular, you know, and everybody was against Zumba. Zumba is just a waste of time. And so I said, hey, you know what? From sitting on the couch and doing Zumba, I go for the Zumba. 
So mm -hmm. when you are doing nothing, anything, any type of physical activity, any type of sport, any type of movement will make you better. When you've been moving for your entire life, your entire career, of course, there is, you have reached plenty of time ago the point of building machine returns. So you are basically living on a plateau. I'm probably, I'm living on a plateau, been living on a plateau for years, and I still try to find a way to break it. And uh, however, again, uh, the difference is how many, what is your mileage, basically? What is your experience? How skilled you are? Probably, if I would change completely the sport and again decide to become a marathon, marathon runner, will never happen. <laughs> For me, everything about five reps is cardio, so it will never happen. But just to give you an idea, I'll probably get incredible results because it's something I, I'm starting adapting my body to right now compared to... I've been adapting my body to strength training and do use any type of plan technique to improve my strength for decades. So of course, probably I reached my apex. So my my goal can be try to sounds bad if I say slow down the cadence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's pretty much the idea, right? Yeah. And uh, I did realize, I did realize there was some kind of some dramatic changes in performance, like from up to 40 years old, nothing happened. I kept improving. Now from 40 to 45, I did see that something was not responding as well as before. And from 45 to 50, something else. And now above 50, something else. There are some changes which are, by the way, uh, uh, scientifically proved. For instance, you get a, um, you do lose strength because you do lose a uh, number of working motor units. And this is just because it is, you know, it is, uh, I'm not sure I use the proper English in English in physiology for this, but it's, you know, uh, nervous system, muscular system are uh, tissues that do not renew, do not renew, as for instance, the skin does. So you were born with a certain amount of muscle cells and you will die with those. But due to injuries, due to accidents, due to scars, due to you do lose part of them, part of them, just as, ha as it happens with your nervous system. And if you, for instance, you have a bad cervical hernia and you damage a nerve, all the uh, uh, muscle fibers that are, you know, connected, the nerve will experiment atrophy. There is some arborization in the, in the, um, in the, uh, uh, sorry, in the, in the plates that, uh, I don't know the English for that, sorry. But you may regain some, but it's inevitable. You're going to lose some of your muscle mass and some of your ability to, re to recruit it. Uh, so there's not much you can do that. So, of course, you will lose strength at one point. Uh, they if, also you take, if you take, Fabio, something like a deadlift, for example, which I know, you're, you know you, you, you've trained probably your whole life. Um, and you, so you... you Obviously, there's a, there's certain things that are going to improve the deadlift. One of them will be, uh, you know, technique. Obviously, um, but so your technique is obviously as dialed in as it can be dialed in from deadlifting your whole life, and it just gets to a certain stage where maybe in your fifties now your technique is as good as it's ever been, and you but you just can't generate as much force to 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 to, to lift that bar that you could have done maybe twenty years ago. Is that? Is that kind of this right, is yeah. where I was getting. So in part is because you don't have as many motor units available as before. Mm. In part is because they talk about sarcopenia, but sarcopenia is related to the fact, and you will bring up that quote later on, uh, that if you don't train it, you're going to lose it. But I don't believe in sarcopenia as a natural process. I do think that it's related to the fact that you stop training. But then there is a gradual conversion of your fast twitch fibers into slow twitch fibers. This is what happens with aging. So several factors, right? Now it's interesting because you mentioned the deadlift. The deadlift in the squat is where basically I didn't really lose much, probably almost at nothing. I did lose in my upper body, which is interesting because most of the studies say that your limbs are the first one to give up compared to your uh, core uh, muscles. Uh, however, the uh, lower body did not lose much. The upper body did. Now, it's interesting because there is also another factor that um, 
about which people don't really think. Every time you make a mistake, you get a small injury and uh, injury, or you know, uh, or you start feeling pain. You start building walls, right? It means that uh, you start, whether this is conscious or not, building fear of heavy weight or heavy. So your body switches off when the weight goes above a certain level. On one end, this is good because you become really more careful. But there are some inhibitions, that's the right term, that happen through the years, and it's very hard to break them or to overcome those inhibitions. It's like a safety, you know, that does not allow you to generate just as much tension. So part of what happens is physiological, part is due to untraining, part is due to what you've been doing and to your injuries and several other things. There's another interesting fact that may come into play. Now, trust me, you said I dialed in my, my deadline. Believe it or not, uh, I'm still trying to improve my technique in the deadlift, you know, and all the other lifts. It is interesting because after 38 years, 39 years of conventional deadlift, I started su do, doing sumo this year. So I'm trying to learn something new, right? Now, what happens is that Instead of seeing an improvement, I'm, I'm there, right? So it may be that I'm still improving the technique, which partially overcomes the loss I have in muscle mass, in ability to generate tension, recruit motor units, and several other things, which is also interesting. So, you know, there are so many factors involved that you don't have an answer. You have a whole bunch mm. of answers. One thing I was going to mention, Fabio, it came to, to mind as you were talking. Um, well, one thing I was going to mention earlier, actually, was when you mentioned marathon training and maybe going into distance running, uh, not seriously for yourself, I know, but um, you mentioned it. And I was going to say, actually, distance running and endurance events, people do seem to be able to keep uh, improving and run and, and staying at a fairly high level for, for longer than kind of strength events. And then something you mentioned was that as you get older, kind of fast twitch, <clears throat> fast twitch fibers, maybe start, did you say changing to slow twitch fibers? So yes, yeah. that's a natural process. By the way, this process is happens also in younger athletes, hmm. because this is interesting because any type of activity, even pure strength training tends to convert your fast twitch fibers into intermediate or slow food fibers. And the only way to get to reverse the process is sometimes taking some periods off. But naturally with aging, this is what he has been seen. Mm -hmm. I have an interesting data on this. Now, I have been training with the same training partner for 21 years this year, same guy. And we train every morning together, right? And um, I've been, I always been stronger than him. And he's 11 years younger than I am. And so gradually he's catching up with me, right? So upper body, we're almost there. Lower body, I'm still kind of stronger than he is. But this is what is interesting. The, uh, the plan we're running now is based on a test, some tests that you run before you start the plan, which is testing your one rep max and then assessing how many reps you're able to do with 80% of that weight, right? And this kind of tells you how you're gonna manage the weight, the weight increases week by week. This is one thing. The second thing, part of the plan, there are some sets that are done to refusal. Let me explain what refusal means. Uh, you know, the bodybuilders train to failure, right? Now in strong first, we don't train to failure <laughs> because you become good at what you train for, what you practice, you practice failure, you become good at failing. So, we never say we train to failure and we never allow a sloppy rep to happen. So all reps must be perfect. So we call it training to refusal it means pushing your set to have as many reps as you can complete without failing and without compromising technique. So there are some RM sets, right? And this happens in every training session. Now, this is interesting because I, I have always been a low endurance athlete. What does that mean? Low endurance, of course, because I do strength training, but low endurance within strength training means that with percentages of one rep max, which is around 80%, I'm 
I was able, 80, 85%, 85% I was able to knock four reps, four to five reps, and probably five to six with, eight, with 80%. Now, it's interesting because my training partner is still there. So we pretty much use the same weight, right? And let's say we use 100 kilos in the bench press, right? And uh, uh, let's say, sorry, uh, one rep max is 140 kilos on the bench press. Let's say this, which means that we can both do one single with, with that amount of weight. With 140 kilos. If we drop down to 80% of that amount, right, while he can do his probably six reps, I can do 10, which is something I was able to do probably, probably uh, with 75% or 70% of, of one rep max before. So it's also interesting in the Kelvin Winter Press, he's now stronger than I am. But if we do RM with a 40 kilo bell, I can definitely outrun him. I can do probably four to five reps more than he can do, which is interesting because we were at the same level. So through the years, something we noticed is that our one rep max strength level remained pretty much the same he improved. But what changed between he and I, with this you know, 11 years difference is that with lower weights, I can do more reps than he can do. So he increases strength. I decrease my strength, but with the same weight, I can knock more reps than he can do. That's mm. interesting. So, so your strength, so your strength endurance has has improved. Has improved, yes. Yeah. Mm. Which is interesting. And so that's not kind of, that's not as and that's not as a byproduct of specific training for that. You feel that physiologically, uh, that's just happened as you got older. Happened. Yeah. Also, because think about this. I got all the training diets. It's 21 years. We both do run the same plan all the time, all year long. Uh, another interesting thing, so that you, you mentioned marathon running, uh, and this is just a guess. I'm not an expert in endurance training, but now for strength, for pure strength, you need a certain amount of muscle mass. You need a certain amount of hypertrophy, of course, and you need the ability to recruit as many uh, more of units as you can at the same time, right? When you do endurance, uh, you don't really need that much muscle mass, that much amount of fast twitch fibers, and you don't need to recruit them all at once. What you need is probably good mitochondria, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, good levels of hemoglobin in your blood and so on. So this may be one, uh, and also your, your skeleton, you know, your uh, skeletal, skeletal system and connective tissue do not have to support as much weight as they would do with pure strength training with a back squat. If you just, you know, doing your marathon running or running 10K or whatever. So my guess is that this is one of the reasons for which you can keep it for longer, right? There is one downside. There's more free radicals and other stuff that may, you know, may not be the best for you. I mean, endurance athletes, this is what they say. I'm not a uh, fat mouth in the uh, endurance athlete, but what they say is that they age, uh, they age earlier, uh, which kind of makes sense. Dep and again, it all depends on how you train. You know, we have the trainer holics, which need to do to run a marathon every day. And they do those who run a marathon, but train smart for it. You know, and so that's different. Same apply in strength training. Uh, I just had a friend of mine, uh, he's a personal trainer, he's now in, in hospital, he's, gonna, he's waiting for a surgery in his lower back because he's been doing crazy stuff with weights. So uh, every, everything done improperly doesn't take you a long way. If you do it properly, you can go a very long way. And this is by this way, is, this, this is uh, right. So there's something I've been thinking about the whole time you've been talking there. And then James, James asked a few questions and I was like, right. So there's, there's, two, there's, there's a couple of things here, and you mentioned it. You said, like, you know, if you started doing endurance run and say you'd, you'd, you'd make gains in that very quickly because your training age, you'd be young if you started doing exactly. that because you haven't done it before. And, and this is what I want to talk about, training age and biological age. So if there's somebody who's been training as long as you have and they're in the 50s, obviously – things are going to start to happen and there'll be things you could do in your twenties that you can't do now. You might hit a PR, like you said, that's not going to happen forever. However, if you start training in your mid thirties, forties, which some of the listeners will be either doing or contemplating on doing, they'll be like, where do I begin? 
and then what's happening there is your training age, you're very young, aren't exactly. you? So therefore, the gains you've got to make are massive. You can, and, and it, it doesn't have to be quick. It could take 20 years. So you might be able to lift more when you're 55 than you could when you were 35, because when you were 35, you were technically only like three years old in training. So what, like, how, how would you explain that to somebody? So you get the fear, like you said, of lift. People are scared. People can be scared of lifting weight. I don't, I could never do, I get that. I could never do that. And it's like, well, have you tried? Well, no, but I'm, I'm, you know, it's too heavy. I would never be able to do that. And that could be with a 12 kilo bell, a 20, whatever it is, um, or a certain weight on a barbell or whatever. So how would you explain that to somebody who was about to get started, say, in the mid 30s, early 40s? You know, well, small, it's just going to bring one example. We had our Italian SFG one in Naples this year in June, back in June. We have a we had a 72 years old lady uh, who started after she retired. She was a teacher, right? And she made it. She passed. I mean, people at 28 years old did not pass. She passed. She did everything, and she was amazing. Especially because she started after way in her 60s. She never did anything. Before. Now, here's the thing, and this is what some words scare people, like heavy or lifting, right? I gotta lift weights. I gotta, now, heavy, I'm going to quote Einstein here. Heavy is, <laughs> heavy is relative. You know, one thing, this is one thing I say, uh, I want to provoke people. I'm going to teach my barbell worship to very basic ones, you know. So, hey, uh, just a warning. Today, you're all going to go heavy. Because it's easy to become a master in lifting something with a PVC pipe. But everything is easy until it gets heavy, right? And people say, hold on, hold on. I mean... I, I'm really going to do a bit, go heavy, and they think, oh, he's got, this guy's going to try to ask me to deadlift 200 kilos on the bar. No, no, heavy is what is heavy for you. So heavy may be 250 kilos for one person, maybe the empty bar for someone else. So lifting is always, and we know that best results come with medium weight, which is something that goes between 70 and 85 percent of your one rep max. What does that mean? It means that if currently where you are at now, you can lift, uh, you use kilos or pounds in the UK, kilo, right? Yeah. yeah. Or barbells, right? If you can lift 20 kilos, I'm asking you to lift no more than 14, 16 kilos, right? Which is something you can definitely do. If you can, however, if you can lift 200 kilos, I will probably ask you to lift 140 and so on. But so heavy, it, it's a relative concept. So, mm. and for someone, and this is interesting, and because, and I know, well, you guys know our strong first SFB surf, right? The body weight. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that the hardest one among all of our surfs? No. Barbell no. is for me. It turns out I'm a natural at body weight, but like we work this out, it's because I've got short limbs and I've, I, I weigh nothing. So <laughs> everything, everything was okay. <laughs> but seriously, technique wise, it's the hardest we have. Yes. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. And for me, especially, you know, because remember that I, people that do not know me, you guys do, don't see how I'm shaped, but pretty much I am a cube. Vertical or horizontal, I'm pretty much the same size, right? I just can't roll because I'm a cube. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not a ball, but so I'm short, heavy, right? With short limbs. So for me, I'm built to be terrible at body weight. However, I do my things, but it was the most challenging one for me. And here's the, here, here's the point. Uh, people think that body weight is light and it's heavy. And, and, it's, and it's something that everybody can do. No. I mean, if you take an overweight person weighing 100 and, you know, 115 kilos, for them, body weight is almost impossible. For them, a barbell is a solution because, hey, you can use an empty barbell. You cannot cut off one leg if you can do pull-ups, right? So this is the point. In your case, Peter, you're light. You're a light person with short limbs. You're built for body weight, right? But for instance, James had a hard time because he's so long with long limbs 
And yeah. for him, controlling a one arm, one leg push up was hard work, right? So, point is, it's not about words, it's about the meaning. Now, when you say body weight, if you tell them, if you tell anybody we're going to do a body weight training session, everybody goes, oh, yes, let's do this. Nobody will be in fear. In fear. If you tell him lift the barbell, lift the kettlebell, people will be in fear. But here's the point there is no limit to what you can add on the bar. It can be an empty PVC pipe, an empty bar, or 200 kilos. Body weight, if you're talking about just, you know, standing and doing this exercises here, the ones you see in, you know, in cartoons or movies, no big deal. But a squat, a body weight squat, may be a one rep max for someone. Mm. Mm. I mean, there are people who have a hard time getting up from a chair, from a sofa, right? Mm. So again, the concept of heavy is very relevant. If, if you explain, instead of saying we're going to lift weights, you know, I like to say, I'm going to strengthen your muscles because mm. it doesn't involve the words heavy or anything like this. So there are two, there, there are two things that, that makes, make the concept understandable, in my opinion. One is improving the ability to move, moving better. The other is strengthening muscles. Actually, I would use strengthening the movement patterns other than muscles because muscles brings me to that bodybuilding idea, which is something that I have been a bodybuilder, but it's something I don't like to sell or to do because strengthening your bicep does not make you a strong person. You may have all your single muscles strong, but if you're not able to coordinate into them into a movement, you're not strong at all. So I would say, you know, improving movement capacity, movement ability, movement skill, and improving strength within the, the basic movement patterns. This is what I would say. But if you tell people, you talk about, uh, you, you mentioned movement patterns, they have a hard time understanding. If you tell them, bring force or strengthen your muscles, they would understand this idea, right? So the idea is, how do you start in your 30, 50s? You want to move easier, move better, move pain-free, and feel, Everything, every every effort, every daily effort, you want that to feel easier. This is what we're looking for, you know? And I, I do see people at my age, it's interesting, I don't know you guys, because you're also, I mean, you're in your 40s and you'll see that even more in your 50s, but have you, do you oftentimes go, sometimes go to some of those dinners with your old schoolmates or something like that? Ever happened? Yeah. I do that on a regular yep. basis. I still have uh, a chat, on with um, with my schoolmates at secondary school. So we were at school together in our teens, right? And I go to the dinners and I feel like, oh my God, there's grand my grandfather, my grand grandfather there, <laughs> my grandfather, <laughs> Aunt Jane, and, and and it's because they haven't they haven't been moving for a while. And for them, things that are incredibly easy for me are really hard. Right. So, yes. of course, I cannot sell them the idea of lifting a bar, you know, but do they need to lift the bar? How do you get stronger at the beginning? You don't need well, 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 this is this is one of the things as well, isn't it? When this is what I was thinking when we were talking about this, about training as you get older. It means something different to everybody because some people think they're old in their 40s. And, and you're not, and you're not, are you? Let's face it, you're not. You get, you get. In this day and age, you if you're in your forties, you're going to live the same again, pretty much. You may, you, know? you, you may, you may be old in your forties. You may be old in your twenties. Yeah. People twenty-five years old, who, in my opinion, they are old because they can't move. Yeah. And I think now, James, this is the best time for you to bring up that book. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just to explain, we, we were talking just before coming coming on air, and uh, it was about a question, which we'll, we'll go on to in a second, probably. But the quote was, uh, you know, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Or you don't stop training because you get old. You get old because you stop training. And um, it was a question from Les, who asked me the other day, and he said he, he plays cricket, a um, uh, team sport, and he's 63 years old now. And he said, kind of, how do you know when to stop competing? 
and we kind of had a discussion. I wanted to have this discussion with 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 Pete and with Fabio as well. Um, there's a difference between team sports. There's solo sports. There's obviously age group categories for many sports now. Um, but Lezard said, I think he's not doesn't feel he's playing cricket particularly well at the moment and it, but he's never been one, one who just is there to make up the numbers but one thing that he said that really kind of stuck with me was he said well the, if you decide you're going to stop or retire from playing a sport you're a long time retired and he basically was saying that you know if he decides to stop now he's not going to play again and he's until he dies you know so it's kind of you know it's looking at that kind of if you say you're going to give you stop, that's it for life. So it's that it's, it's quite a hard decision, I think, for him. Um, and there's there's not really a right and a wrong answer to this, I know, because there's so many things, uh, you know, so many uh, possibilities, and, and people do sports for all different kinds of reasons, not just for, 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 for performance. It could be for community, for friendship, for exercise, for health, all those things. It doesn't necessarily need to be to compete at a high standard but i suppose if you're used to competing at a you know a high-ish standard and you notice your performance dropping um i can see where that kind of question comes from so yeah i just wanted to kind of get your 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 views on things i have well first let's let's start with that quote which is partly of the answer i mean you didn't become old because you didn't stop playing because you became old but you became old because you stopped playing and this happens everywhere. And one of the saddest things I've ever seen, people have been working really hard their entire life and say, okay, now I retire. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to rest. And then they die one year later. How many mm -hmm. times we heard this? I mean, you have, you have no reason to live anymore, right? And those who instead keep themselves active, you know, kind of live for decades after and have a great life and so on. So I do think that we need reasons to stay young, reasons to live, and challenges that keep us alive. If you just let yourself go, you'll just die at one point. Atrophy is, is a term that applies to everything, also to your own life. You know, just get tired of life and nothing. So, uh, what time you stop playing? It's interesting because, as you said, there are some sports in which you may compete until you until you're really old because they're age group categories. So you're not, you know, you're not a 70 year old person competing against 25s, but you're competing in your category. Uh, Pavel's father, Vladimir, he's been competing in powerlifting until his very late 70s. I'm not sure, but probably he did a competition in his 80s. But of course, he was competing with people same age, right? So this makes it easier. Team sports are different because there's another factor. If you don't have an age category, unless you just change team and you form your own uh, non-professional team made with your friends, you know, uh, at one point the team will say, you know, you should just walk away because you're not performing anymore. So I do understand that. And by the way, I did try to watch cricket many times when I was a kid and I was in the UK. I never understood it. But uh, <laughs> hey, that, that, brings, that brings me onto something that this fits really well, actually. And it's about cricket. So there's a there's Freddie Flintoff who was a, an England cricketer. I know nothing about cricket either, but there's a there's a program on at the minute. There's a series on TV. So he's from a working class background. I think he grew up in Preston, in the UK. So he's from a working class background, and I think eighty percent of cricketers, professional cricketers, are from um, private schools and and what have you. So from like you know from well wealthier backgrounds, well, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and he's not, and he managed, he ended up playing for England. So he's, you know, he's saying it can be done. So he's gone back to his hometown and he's trying to get, he's, he's talking to the kids, like 15, 16 year old kids and trying to get them interested in cricket. They don't know anything about it. They're not interested. And um, they don't even know who he is. So he put, the first episode was on last night. He puts a team together. They're training together for, for a, like six or seven weeks it's going to go on for a few more months but he, he set up a game and they played a team who've played together for years and the average age of these guys was 65 okay <laughs> and they're playing a bunch of kids whose average age is 17 or something like that the 65 year olds thrashed them 
the, they won, <laughs> right? They did. The kids didn't get one person out. I th- you know, they played a certain amount of overs, and then they were all out for for. I, th- I think the the sixty five year olds got sixty runs, and the kids were all out for forty runs or something. So there's a the thing about age. If the kids had been playing longer, they would have won, right? You, or you'd you'd expect them to. Um, but the bunch of 65-year-olds won because they've got more experience. They play together each week. So there's a one for Les. He's 63. He's slowed down. These 65-year-olds are going to slow down from where they were. You know, none of them look like athletes. <laughs> Let's face mm. it. Mm. And But they still won because they had more experience. So the experience is there. And they, and they, were, they were saying there's a lot more to it than just the sport. Because it's the it's the community, it's the people, it's the friendships and all that. So you could see they were using it as a as something they enjoyed. But it was just they, you know they all went for tea afterwards because cricket involves eating scones and all that afterwards, doesn't it? But so there's a one there's a one for Les straight away. Is yeah, what what do you do if you give up? What what replaces it? If this makes sense. Now think about this. If why should you? And and your friend uh, James Hunt plays cricket. He's right now. If I give up, I'm not going to play anymore. Now, it's first of all, it's not only about winning and performance. It's everything that's related because you don't play your sport anymore. Now, it's not. Think about this. Even when you go to the gym, regular fitness gym, right? You go for training, but you see your friends there. You make friends. You go out for beer. You do things. So. You stop playing your sports, right? It's not only about competing. You stop playing your sport. And at one point, all those, what do you do in those spare hours? Uh, Let's say two hours, three times a week, right? Which is not much because you can do way more than that. You'll probably be on the couch watching TV or, you know, on the internet, you know, browsing and doing something like that. So first of all, it keeps you active. It doesn't matter whether you compete or not. Now, I do understand one thing because it has been frustrated for me at the beginning when I, when I stopped competing was, okay, what am I training for? You know, if I keep repeating my routine and just to maintain, if you don't have goals, uh, it's hard to keep training, to keep consistent. I give you one example. Uh, I, my, in my life, it's always been a huge challenge to keep a decent body composition because genetically, I'm, I, I'm overweight. So if I just let it go, I, I reach my hundred kilo very easy. So I have to live, I don't say on a diet, but I have to live in being very mindful of what I, how I eat and how much I eat. Right. And I do realize that when I set some goals and I have date, a time and a precise goal, there's nothing that will pull me out of my diet. And you know that, you guys know that because during the SFB, I would have my snacks, I would not drink a beer, I would not, except for what it was set as my cheat day, you know, my cheat meal or whatever, because I had a focus. I wanted to take at my 52nd birthday, I wanted to be below 83 kilos body weight and take a photo with my six pack evidence. So I had that. After that, for a few months, I could maintain it. And now I realize I had a hard time sticking to the diet. And I end up throughout the week, you know, eating some extras and so on. Because I don't have a goal a day at a time. So it's not only about performance, pretty much everything. In our life, we do need goals and deadlines. Otherwise, you do things, but you lose, you lose what really pushes in to be consistent and to be committed and so on. So if you compete, you have, you have the, you have the, uh, competition, the meet, game, whatever. If you don't compete, uh, solution is simply creating your goals. And they don't have to be unreachable goals. For instance, I do have some medium-term and long-term goals now. I needed them because why should I train and keep lifting now? Why should I do a, a wave cycle where I keep adding weight to the bar for three weeks, then back up? step two steps back and go up and 15 weeks plan testing before testing after why should i do that i'm not competing anymore why well because i do have i do have a goal uh my current goal is after this 15 weeks 
I still believe, since I introduced the sumo deadlift, I still believe I can do a PR on a sumo deadlift. So I have this. This is my medium term goal. So I, for the next year or so, I want to reach, see if I can build up my sumo, why? And this goes back to what you said before, Peter, because to the sumo deadlift, I'm new. I can yep. still get results. I'm getting results every cycle I'm doing. I'm improving. I mean, I was terrible at sumo deadlift. I was really strong with conventional. I mean, at 48, 49, I pulled 270 kilos and I was 83 kilos body weight, which is good. Uh, for someone who's, who's built for squat, not built for deadlift like me, I got short arms, so I'm not built for deadlift in conventional. But believe it or not, my sumo was like 200, so 70 kilos below, right? So I started building the sumo, right? And now I'm at 230. And my goal is try to see if I can reach 270 in sumo. And I think I can be able to get there, right? Now, this is the medium term goal, a few years. I do have a goal for my 60s. My goal for my 60s is have the same one rep maxes I have now. So I know we're, yeah, it is there. So I do understand that there may be injuries, there may be things that may happen and so on. But if I have that in mind, right, I have a reason to keep training. Now, also, another, I have a secondary goal in that, which is the four or five reps with 80% of my one RM, watching the videos and see that the technique has improved. Yep. This is my goal. It was my goal for my 50s, by the way. My 50s, I broke on my record in my 40s. Uh, <laughs> oh, the squat record, actually. But I was pretty much there. And I have the same goal for the 60s. If you, so either you compete, you keep competing if you have, if you have your age classes and so on, or at least you need to have, to have a reason to go there. Uh, there are people, you know, this is one of the reasons that for which I, I have a hard time, for instance, understanding uh, activities such as CrossFit, where they do the workouts, right? And nothing against it, but it wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> so, you know, the workout is a basically a test, as many reps as possible, you know, as many rounds you complete in a certain amount of time, or within a given time, how many reps you can do, how many rounds you can do, and so on and so forth. You basically you test yourself all the time, but there's no, you keep changing, you know, your focus, you keep changing your training, and I do need some consistency because I need to measure the results. If I were, if I was going, was going to a CrossFit box, I would probably pick two workouts, let's say, I don't know, Fran and Cindy, two of them, and I will simply do them every three times a year to see if I can get better numbers. But I wouldn't just do the workouts. I would train for them. Mm. While some people are happy with going to the gym or practicing their activities just to get some adrenaline or just to relax. For instance, I know many who uh, play endurance sports, uh, cyclists or people who run, which they use that as a form of meditation. You know, mm. they, they, they listen to their breathing, they keep a rhythm and so on. Their mind goes elsewhere, they think. They, they use that as a meditation or a relaxing time. This is an anti-stress, which can work perfectly. Uh, I personally prefer to sleep if I have to do that. However, I do understand that, right? So in that case, you can do it just for the sake of doing it because it makes you feel good. I wouldn't be able to train and go lift weight just to feel good. I do need goals. And this is the way people are built. So for some people, probably, you know, just saying, I, I will always keep doing my three, four training sessions a week. I want to keep consistent doing pretty much the same things to keep my health level. I perfectly understand that. But if they then probably they have other passions and goals or hobbies in which you're committed. But to stay young, you need to have something that still lights a fire in you and keeps you focused and committed on that. That may be, you know, uh, building uh, uh, ships, you know, with like bricolage, whatever, <laughs> or maybe, yeah, it may be doing woodwork. It may be, but all the people who I have seen, and if you think about all the people you know, or older guys or older ladies that are in perfect shape. Each one of them has a passion 
that they they keep you know cultivating they keep building some uh could be my grandma used to work with wool and you know uh and build and you know make jumpers for and sweaters for Fishy. all the family mm -hmm. uh my grandfather he was a wine maker right he made wine until the very last year of his life right and it was a hard job and he didn't he was retired he didn't need to make wine and sell wine he made wine for the family because he had the passion of going into the wineyards walking to the wine and selecting the right grapes that was a passion right mm -hmm. and someone else has culture reading books and uh someone has several other things if you have something in your mind that a goal then you're alive because mm -hmm. you know nature the way nature works is that you basically you're you're born you grow and then there is reproduction of the species right and then people and then animals slowly you know age and die mm -hmm. and once you have animals once they have taken care of reproduction they gradually start dying you know there is an old iron maiden song the clairvoyant says even the strange as soon as you're born you're dying you know yep the clairvoyant uh, little song <laughs> so if once you have built your family and and took care of the main things in your life which usually is finish your education you know find a good job uh be successful in your work building a family having children this is what most people do once everything is done what do you have you need to find something that keeps you alive and the best way to keep yourself alive is that one of keep having passion and goals and that may be sports and performance or something else so if your goal is if you, if you keep your motivation through sports and performance then you should keep competing if not just do some movement because you need movement to keep yourself healthy but find something that really on which you're really passionate or explore something in which you can become really passionate and do that and keep doing that because that's going to keep you sharp and you know and young and until, until that is possible mm. that's absolutely fantastic Fabio. i think that's probably a good place to uh to kind of wrap up uh that 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 discussion but uh yeah that was really good and i'm, I'm really love the way we sort of delved into the the question of you know training as we age getting you know continuing to get stronger as we age and then obviously the question around uh, competing and the way you sort of tied that up there with, you know, passion in life and just having a reason. And, and you mentioned before a kind of a reason for training, but I think what we moved into there at the end was almost a reason for living, wasn't it? It was, it was to give your life deeper, deeper meaning, you know, um, and to, and to have a reason to live, which was, which was fantastic. Um, Pete, do you have anything you'd like to sort of say in conclusion as we, as we wrap up? Um, it's a bit flippant, but I was just, I was just thinking when Fabio was saying there. So at the minute, I'm doing basically pistols, press, pistol squats, presses, and and pull ups. And future be steamer. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm 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 nearly there on the squat on the pistol. I'll have the 48 on this cycle, but I've I've just bought one actually, so for that very reason. But um. What what's funny is I really enjoy it. I enjoy the process, but then when it gets when the cycle moves up and up and it gets heavy, I then start to question why I'm doing it. I'm like, why am I doing this? Do I really need to be able to do? Because it? it gets hard, and then the workouts get really like not 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 so hard that I can't do them because obviously that that doesn't work as we know. So, but I'm getting close to comfort, to the edge of my comfort that I'm like. I'll just start question. Why am I doing this? Why do I get guys to do it in the like with me? Why do I get them to lift weights? Why, why, why? I start questioning the lot. But then as soon as the cycle goes back down again, and then I start to go back to like pistol squat a 20 kilo or something, it feels so easy. And I'm like, that's why I'm doing it, because it makes all the it makes everything easier. That's why, and then I get the I get re-inspired to say, right, I'm gonna continue to train people because that's what I love doing. But I, I, that must be every every couple of months I go through that. So Me too. I totally understand what you're saying. You find something you're passionate about, but then you can lose the passion for that depending on where you are. But so it's keep recalibrating, saying why, and keep questioning why you're doing it. And if you yeah. can, if you can find a reason, you'll keep doing it. So yeah, I love that. In in 
also inspiring, if another good reason for going on. At least yeah. for me. Now, th this happened a couple of years ago. Uh, I think three years, right before the year before before the pandemic, so in 2019. And initially, it took a bad, and I thought about it, and it was probably the greatest compliment I ever got. So I was, um, I used to spend my summers in LA, uh, working for Stronkers, you know, and, and Pavel's there. So I would rent an apartment in Venice uh, and spend my summers there. I did that for three years now. So and I, my apartment was five minutes walking distance from Gold Gym, you know, Venice Beach in Venice. Not the one, not the uh, beach one, but Gold. So I would train there and, you know, seeing Schwarzenegger there like three times a week was just, just seeing him was enough, was a good reason to go there. But, you know, we'd go there and train. And um, now the, that gym is a total disaster. I mean, it's, it's a mess. It, everything is. And I'm OCD. So if, if you see my, my place, everything has its place, you know. And if you see my home gym, every single bumper plate kettlebell has the right orientation and so on. Go there in that, that crazy, you know, it's like being in the circus. However, I would train outside. Outside, we have a couple of deadlift platforms and some kettlebells and a couple of power racks. I would train there. And I was training doing my belly session. There was a guy, a young guy, young lad, probably he was in his 18s, right in the platform on my side. And he was technically, he wasn't good. Not at all. Uh, and, you know, being there, I would not say anything, but just bite my tongue because I would have gone there and said, listen, just let me fix your setup. But, you know, it's not the case over there. There are personal trainers and other people, and you, you don't want to get in the way. But, I was appreciating very much his commitment. I mean, he was doing something not perfectly. However, you could see how focused he was, how committed he was. He would take, keep his training diary and so on. So I was basically, I wanted to go there and talk to him and try to see if I could fix some mistakes, but I was admiring him because it's not easy to see that type of commitment and precision in a, in a young lad. You know this, you know, you start building that awareness later on. Mm -hmm. And, but I was noticing this guy was watching me all the time. So at one point, you know, toward, I was still doing that list when he finished and he found the courage, he approached me and he goes, sir, yes, <laughs> uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell you something. Yeah, please do. Uh, you know, I, I saw the way you're training and I'm, I'm inspired. I, I really hope that I will be able to do what you're doing when I'll be your age. Yeah. And I was like, so you're saying I'm old? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Initially, I was like, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm stronger than you are. My weight's are three times yours, and I'm better. I mean, that, that just you're saying I'm old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so initially. And... So I, I made this happy face. It was like, you know, Terminator when he tries to smile. I was like, <laughs> thank you. you know? And I, would, I went home mumbling, saying, oh, my God. I mean, say your age, this guy. So people see I'm old now, you know. And then I thought about it. I said, hey, come on. This guy was doing the best compliment ever. This person says that even if I'm in, in my 50s, in my 50s, I was probably 49, yeah, 50 there. This guy is saying, I'm inspiring him. I'm giving him the reason to train. My God, this is awesome. This is beautiful. This is the best compliment I ever received. I just didn't get it at the beginning, you know, mm. because again, I, I went back and thought when I was 18, at 30 years old to me was old. Yes. So he's not saying I'm old is again, everything is relative, you know, as much as a 20 kilo bar is heavy for 80 years old lady. Uh, a 30 years old guy is old for 18 and probably yeah. a 50 way older. So he's not saying I'm old. He says I'm way older than he is, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a company. And this, you know, this, I kept thinking about this, you know, I said, you know what? This is one of the reasons for which I train because I'm, I'm leading by example. I'm giving a good example. I mean, I teach certs, I teach courses, you know, and the idea that someone will say, you know what? I want to keep going on this path. I want to keep training because I want to be in shape at 50 years old or at 60. That's a great motivation, in my opinion. You know, 
And this is great, great motivation, at least for me, for keep doing what I do, for keep training, keep myself in shape and so on, because I'm given, I'm given a good example to those who are deciding now in their 20s whether at 40 they will be old or not. Yeah. Because yeah. what you do in your 20s, you know, and early 30s is what will state how you will be, unless, you know, things happen, accident happens, who you will be and how you will be in your 50s and 60s. You know, mm. because so many people at 25 years old, they're destroyed and they can't, they're, they reach the point of no return in which, yes, they can lose the weight, but some of the damages they've done to their bodies will be permanent. So, you know, in, in your 20s and 30s is what, where you decide how easy it's going to be or hard your life in your 40s and 50s. But the good thing is that it's never too late. I mean, whether you started 40, 50, 60, 70, you still have the same margin of improvement. Of course, with the same relationship that's heavy for you. It means you can improve 80%, which may be a lot or not much depending on your starting point, but you can still change your life. Hmm. Fabian. That's, that's great. Well, so what you're saying there is, what does it look like in 20 years' time? There's a, there's a podcast out there going around, and there's, a, there's this really inspirational guy on there who keeps saying that. I can't remember the name of it. I think, I think it's the <laughs> Health Quality Podcast. But what does it look like in 20 years' time? And if every, everything, every decision that you make now, if you think about what that does to who you'll be, like whether it's training or whatever, whatever decision you make now, if you decide who that makes you become in 20 years' time, if it's a good decision or a bad decision, it, it, it changes everything. That changed my game completely. And think about this, you know, uh, for instance, if someone, when I used to, I used to help people with nutrition when I was coaching in bodybuilding and so on, you know, and I would always ask her, you know, their a very complete nutritional diary of the past weeks, you know, and also all the previous training plans they did. Why do you need that? Because what I see now is the result of what you've done in the past. Yeah. Right? So yep. we all are what we are now. What people see right now is the result of what we've been doing in the past, in the past months or even years. So again, what are you doing today is setting your foundations for the future. You know. Hmm. Fabio, that's absolutely brilliant. Really, really good to, uh, to to catch up with you again and to get your insight into uh, next time. into those questions. Yeah, and we look forward to next time. And I'm sure we'll see you again at a certification or because you're not you're not doing the SFG one or the SFL this year, are you? Not this year because you know I've been you guys have been dealing with me for an entire year and a half. <laughs> Give some rotation, you know. So <laughs> I'll be coming back, and I look forward to it because I had such a great time. I, I can, I love coming over in the UK. And mm. but of course, you know, I, I also told Claire, you know, can me can be only me, mm. and uh, it's it's good to see rotation. There's so much to learn from all of my colleagues. Mm. The best strategy is keep changing. Mm. I've been the choice because I was the closest one in the past years, so it was easier, you know, with lockdowns and so on. But we're, we're going back to that rotation right now. So, mm. but you know, you can't wait for me because I'm coming. Yeah. By, the way, by the way, Claire is coming to teach her SFG2 this year in October. So if for any reason you guys would like to come and assist, just let me know. You'll be super welcome. Oh, wait, she, she, Claire's coming over, what, to Italy? For... Yes, October yeah. 15th and, eight, and, seven, and 16th. We have oh, the SFG okay. level two. She'll yeah. be leading the team. And by the way, uh, Vicky Farrington is coming over to assist. But if you guys were, would like to consider to come to come over and assist, I'm making live official invitation. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I've still got to do my, I've got to do my half body weight press action and get that over to you still. I'm working on it at the moment. So, you can yeah. do it over there. I'll do it over there. <laughs> you know? Do it now, James. <laughs> uh, anyway. Right. Okay. Fabio, thank you so, so much. Uh, so good night. seeing you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening, everybody. Now, make sure you share, like, subscribe, leave a review if you're listening on a platform that allows you to do so. 
If you'd like to join in on the Facebook group, just go into group search Health Oddity and, uh, and we will let you in there. We will be back next week for episode 99. So we're closing in on our 100th episode, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, so we will see you all next week. Uh, thank you, Fabio, again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Mr. Peter Lance. Pleasure. Absolutely. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and, uh, and we will see you all next week. Thank you very much. See you later. You've been listening to Health Odyssey with Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. To get your regular fix of hype-free health, you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favourite podcasts. You can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey.